Hey, welcome back today. We're wanting to answer a question today that someone had sent in, and I've often said if you've got a question, feel free to send it to us. Either put it in the comment section or feel free to email us, and we will try to answer that question uh, as best we can. And someone asked recently about, and if I was really interpreting their question right, it was sometimes, is it okay for a person to come to Christ um, because they're they're more conscious of the uh, penalties of sin rather than the sin itself, or the consequences of sin rather than the sin itself. Well, let me tell you, here's my answer. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Because here's the thing, when you come to the Lord, then you're going to grow in Christ. Okay, now I'm going to give you some examples to sort of back up what I'm saying. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11 that uh, when it talks about Moses and where Moses came from in the Old Testament, how he came out of Egypt. And the Bible said that he chose to be with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So the Bible says clearly here that there are pleasures in sin. All right, now as far as the question, you know, worrying about the consequences of sin rather than the actual sin itself. Okay, well... I want to relate something to you as a child growing up. As I was a kid growing up, and of course as a kid I didn't drive, but I rode with you know my mom and dad uh, quite often going up and down the highway. When we would be on the interstate back then, the people, uh, you know, the speed limit back then was like 55 mile an hour. That was on the interstates. And I'm talking about here in the United States. 55 mile an hour. Well, we would drive back and forth and and people would just a lot of times which my mom and dad they tried to drive the speed limit and a lot of times they would put the car on cruise so they wouldn't go over the speed limit but you'd have people zipping by at 60 65 mile an hour well later on uh they increased the speed up to 65 mile an hour now all of a sudden it was 65 to drive on the interstates well guess what happened we be we was able my mom and dad was able to up their speed to 60 or 65 mile an hour. Okay, they could set the screws for 65. But those people that before were driving 60 and 65 when the speed limit was 55, now all of a sudden they're driving 70 and 75 and zipping right past us. Well, it was probably about the time, a little bit after I started driving, they upped the speed limit again. Now the speed limit was up to 70 mile an hour on the interstate. Well, a lot of times that's what I do. I set my cruise on 70 to try to, or 68 because I try not to get over the speed limit. Well, now guess what? You have people going by me, zipping by me, 90, 85 mile an hour, 90 mile an hour. Some of them are flying. Okay. So with each speed limit that was set, some people zipped right on by regardless. As the speed limit increased, they continued to increase their speed going over the speed limit. All right, but there was a lot of people like myself. We set our speed on cruise or they, you know, and, and one reason why I do that is a lot of times I get not really paying attention if I don't set it on cruise and before I know it, I am going too fast. Okay, but what happens when people see blue lights setting up when they see a cop car setting up maybe in the median on an interstate they begin to slow down they begin to to take their foot off the gas and slow down why because the consequences of breaking the law they don't want a speeding ticket they don't want to have to pay a fine so they're not doing it you know people that drive a lot of people that drive the speed limit they're not driving the speed limit just like hey, I, I'm just happy driving 65 mile an hour. I'm just happy driving 60. That's all I want to drive. No, a lot of people do it because they want to obey and they don't want a ticket. They don't want to have to pay a fine. So what I'm saying is the consequences of breaking the law is what catches that person's attention. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's the consequences. It, it, that, it, that's what catches your attention. That's fine. Either way, it works. Now, again, you know, we said Moses, he chose to suffer with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin.
for a season. So Moses avoided those pleasures in sin. Moses avoided those things that would that would bring him or take him away from God. Now, I want to go back also to another time in my childhood. And it was the very first time that I can remember of myself going to the altar. And as a young man, young boy, I was a little boy, but I'd heard preachers preach a lot of things. And I always, as a kid, you know how you are listening to um, preaching as a kid and you're on the church pew or laying under the church pew writing or something like that. You know, anytime the preacher preached on, you know, the love of God, I'd always think, yeah, you know, that sounds good and just keep writing, doing my little thing. But there was a night that a preacher began to preach on hell and the rich man. And I'll never forget him reading that verse. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. That night, that message hit me hard, and I thought, oh, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. And that night, I went to the altar, and I began to seek God and take take my condition before the Lord as a little kid and say, Lord, you know, I don't want to keep walking away from you. I want to walk with you. But what I'm saying was, it was a message about hell that drew me to the altar. Now, I'm going to tell you something today. Like I said, Things are different. Everyone is different. You might have somebody, you might have a, you could have three different, let's just say, tent meetings set up in an open air somewhere, miles apart. One meeting, a preacher could be preaching on the love of God and draw people to the altar because they want that love of God. Up the road, another tent meeting, someone could be preaching about the Spirit of the Lord on the day of Pentecost, beginning to fall and fill the people. And people could be drawn thinking, I want that spirit. I want to change my life and get right with God. And I want to feel all that power. And they could go to the altar. And then miles up the road, maybe another preacher is preaching on hell. And Jesus Christ does not want you to go to hell. And people could be drawn there. So you see, it's different drawings, different, but it's all the same gospel. And let me tell you this. I want to use an example, another one more example, and we're going to close this video because I hope I've answered your question. It doesn't matter if you come to Christ uh, because you're wanting, because of the consequences of sin rather than the sin itself, okay? Um, and you think about a lot of these things that people do, you know, that, that are against, the, just like I was talking about driving, okay, speeding. People avoid they try to avoid getting a ticket. They're, they're worried about the consequences of paying a fine or getting a ticket on their record rather than just, hey, they don't, they don't get up in the morning and say, hey, I want to be a safe driver today and I want to drive right. No, people say, a lot of people say they don't want to. Now, myself, I just want to get there in one piece, you know. Uh, I pray that God keeps his hand upon us driving. I'm just using this as an example, though. But but the thing is, is other people, they don't want to get that penalty for breaking the law. They don't want to have to pay that fine, okay? The Bible tells us about a man named Saul of Tarsus, and we've talked about him a little bit recently. But on the road to Damascus, Saul of Tarsus, who was at this time, he was an enemy of Jesus Christ because he did not believe in Christ and what Christ came into the world to do. And, and uh, he, was, he was going out to get the followers of Christ. And he thought Jesus was a, a false Messiah. Okay, When Paul or Saul of Tarsus was struck down on the road to Damascus, do you know what Saul said? Saul said, Who art thou, Lord? And that voice from heaven said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. The Bible tells us then that when Saul heard that voice, when Saul was, he, Saul was struck down by that great light, all of a sudden he'd met the master on the road to Damascus. He heard the voice and he heard the name and the Bible said he got up trembling in fear. Trembling. Okay. He didn't 
get up and say, oh, the love of God. I just want the love of God. No, Saul was fearful. It was conviction of what he had done, what he had been doing against Jesus Christ, and now finding out that he was the one true living God, that he, he was persecuting his people. The Bible said Saul was trembling. Okay, so he came he came to Christ in fear, in revelation. I'm not talking about the book of Revelation. In a revelation of who Jesus was, he came to him in fear. But here's the thing you got to remember today. No matter how you come to Christ, if you come to Christ out of that one tent meeting on the love of God, or if you come to Christ out of another tent meeting on, uh, you know, the uh, in hell he lifted up his eyes, Either way, you're going to grow in Christ as a babe in Christ. So the Bible tells us then later, we're going to skip on over a few years. The Bible tells us that this man that got up from the ground trembling at the words, I am Jesus. This man began to grow in Christ and he taught people that as you come to Christ, you are as a baby as a little baby, and you grow each and every day. This man later, that was once trembling, now later said, I am crucified with Christ. So you see how he had grown? So today, don't let that bother you sometimes if you feel like, hey, you know, I come to I come to Christ because I was worried about the consequences of sin rather than the actual sin itself. You know, don't worry about that. What you just do is you grow in Christ each and every day. You give your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want to walk with you and I want to learn more about you. And Jesus Christ, before long, you'll be doing just like Paul, who became Paul. Saul did and he became Paul. See, so you'll go from the trembling to the you're crucified with Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord of your life now. So different people come to Christ in different ways, okay? But however you come to Christ, if it's out of love, it's out of fear, if it's out of depression, if it's out of anxiety, if it's out of, um, you know, maybe your life is turned upside down, maybe you're, maybe just emotions, emotions are going everywhere. Maybe you're out of a job and you think, Lord, what am I going to do? I've got to come to the come to the cross of Christ and, and ask you, Lord, to help me and my family. Whatever the need the important thing is, you are doing it. You are coming to Christ. You're putting that foot forward. So that's what we all want to do here is we want to help each and every one of you in your walk with Christ. I hope this helps you today. I hope it's a little bit of a understanding that whether you come to Christ out of a conviction message or whether you come to Christ out of a message of love or a message of hope or, or a message of the Holy Ghost. However, the main thing is, you come to Christ. Now you can grow and learn in Him. Remember, God loves you. God bless you. And if you're new here and you enjoy this kind of teaching, make sure you hit the video or the uh, subscribe button. And we'll catch you on the next video.